It was very, very emotional. I fucking cried on the plane. Like grown man, 28, 29 years old, just like all this work for all these years to this brand, I don't get anything out of it. But instead of me doing my hot seat tour, they gave Julian Tyler's hot seat tour in conjunction with Tyler. So instead of me doing it, they said, Julian, you can do Tyler's hot seat tour for free. Because if you didn't already know, Tyler is an illegal immigrant to the United States. He's locked in the United States. He can't legally travel outside of the United States. And I'm not sure what his tax situation is. What's up guys, John Anthony here from John Anthony Lifestyle. I wanted to make a quick video about RSD Alex, okay? He was with RSD for a very long time with Real Social Dynamics. The coach Alex, okay, he's Australian. Now he's running uh, the four week natural program. Okay, he goes by Alex Social or Alex Four Week Natural. Now there's a lot of fucking shit to say about this guy. Okay, first off, let me just tell you his current situation. Okay, he's a massive alcoholic. He's in a whole fuckload of debt. Okay, he's dead broke. He's living out of a van. Yes, that's right, he's living out of a van. We'll roll a clip here where he was just doing an interview with Alex from Playing With Fire from his fucking van. It's gotta be about the, the, the coach, the human connection with the coach. And it can't be all about how much money can we get from the, from the client. Yeah, I'm gonna give the non-PC answer. RSD largely sucks balls. <laughs> that's a non-PC uh, version of uh, that answer. Okay, um, he's extremely depressed. He's on record from a whole bunch of posts, okay, trying to have killed himself multiple times. He's posted selfies from a bathtub crying, okay, saying, I'm sad. And he also said in a video, and I'll, I'll dig for the clip, but if I, but if I can't find it, I, I had the clip. This was a video he put out about his real reason for leaving RSD. And basically the summary is that they brought in Julian to run the hot seats and, and European tours and all that shit for free. So they didn't need to pay Alex anymore. So they fired him. And then he told, he says in that video that he cried on the, on the plane ride home back to Australia. I just, I'm like, shit, these guys don't care about their people. I don't owe them anything. They don't owe me anything. It was so sad. I remember the last time I shook Owen's hand, I'm like, I knew that I had to leave. And I was just so sad because it was like, my, it was like, like an older brother who I knew didn't care. And I just had to get over it. So it was very, very emotional. I fucking cried on the plane. Like grown man, 28, 29 years old, just like all this work for all these years to this brand, I don't get anything out of it. Okay, hey, now, why am I saying all that? Okay, I'm not, first off, I'm not making fun of alcoholism or depression or, um, you know, being broke and all this stuff or, or suicide try, attempts. Okay, that's not the focus. That's not, I'm not ragging on any of that. Okay, that's all his own problems, all right? The thing is, he claims to be an inner game expert. Let me repeat that. He says that he is a guru in regards to inner game. Okay, he has, he has a program, um, you know, he, he has a whole mantra where he's talking about, there's no reason why you're not enough. Okay, he's always telling guys, there's no reason why you're not enough. I'll teach you how to like, you know, rise up and like face your demons and all this stuff. He is not qualified to fucking teach that. Okay, he has a fuckload of problems. He's actively depressed and trying to kill himself and barely surviving living out of a van, okay? And not to mention his technical game is way off. He recently just said on the interview with Alex from Playing With Fire, I don't remember the exact amount of days, I think he said like six to eight, I think. He said, after you get a Tinder match, it takes an average of six to eight days to meet up with a girl. That's total BS. And there's more time to work with to make things happen. Okay, it should be within 48 hours max, okay? it should. Most, in most cases, it should be that same day or the next day, okay? So if you get a match on Tinder, because let me tell you this, in door-to-door -door sales, for instance, if you make a connection with, with someone, right? Like you, you talk to someone at their door, if they don't buy right then and there, okay? And then the game equivalent would be if the girl doesn't fuck right then and there, the, the odds of closing that deal go down 50% a day, okay? I don't know the exact stat in game, but you're fighting against the lead eroding over time, okay? so. What you need to do is you get a match. I have these canned uh, scripts that work very, very well that I give to all my students. And then you have this quick back and forth. You move it to text. 
then you set plans for that day or the next day, okay, or, or two days out if you have to. But there's none of this bullshit for six to eight days, so that's just plain wrong. Second of all, and I do have the clip for this one, he says the first half of the night basically doesn't matter. Okay, I did a, a video recently where I showed RSD Julian, former RSD Alex, who's now forward natural Alex, and Valentino Cohen basically all saying the first half of the night doesn't matter. Okay, that's totally inaccurate. So it's very rare in the first two hours, as we say, that you're gonna fuck a girl. Sometimes it happens, sometimes you have like the bathroom pulls, like quick bathroom pulls when the girl's ready, but most of the time, people are just not ready at that time of the night. All right, that's fine, the students, let's make this happen. Again, first half doesn't matter. Yeah. All that matters is the very end. Do you leave with the girl or not? Yeah. And that could happen five minutes before. You don't know. Yeah. So just have fun. Just, like, but if you try to like take the girl home to the hotel too early, then it's only going to create defensiveness and evasiveness and all, like a lot of predictability. So I'm going to wait as long as I possibly can. Quick stride. The longer that you can stay with a chick in a bar building a tension where she's nearby you, knows that you can escalate, knows that you can approach other chicks with her, that you're not trying to pull. Without going into all the details there, I'm reiterating that entire video, I've pulled in the first half of the night as much, if not more, than the second half of the night. There's just a different strategy. Yes, girls don't want to go to an after party or go to this after hangout thing or go with you because they want to spend time in the club but you frame it different and say that you're gonna go rip some shots and come right back, or you're gonna go do something and come right back, okay? So you can get them to leave, and then why it's even a little bit easier than the second half of the night is because it's an easier sell to, to tell them that you're gonna come back than to say that you are gonna leave and not come back, okay? Because then they're like, oh, my friends, my, that's like the number one objection is that they can't leave their friends. But when you're coming back to the friends, it's a lot safer of a thing than, okay, I'm going with this guy for the night and I'm not coming back to the friends. So his technical game is totally wrong there. There's, I could go on and on and on. I could make a whole fucking video about deconstructing why his technical game is very off, which I probably will do. But a lot of people have been asking me to make this video and I thought it would be a fitting time since Alex from Playing With Fire, who's my good buddy by the way, and I'm not, I don't mean any disrespect since he had him on the channel. He was curious of his you know, thoughts and this and that, having worked with RSD and, and all that. And Alex, the, RSD Alex kind of danced around any kind of questions about what he thinks about RSD. Although, playing with Fire Alex at one point said that they suck balls, and we'll show that clip. As well. <laughs> it's got to be about the, the, the coach, the human connection with the coach, and it can't be all about how much money can we get from the, from the client. Yeah, I'm going to give the non-PC answer. RSD largely sucks balls. <laughs> That's a non-PC uh, version of uh, that answer. <laughs> but the other area where he's wrong from a technical game standpoint is he has this thing called four times reapproach rule. Meaning if the girl is not interested, you should go in up to four, four times total. So up to three more times. Okay, Every, that's wrong too. Okay, everything in my game is centered around compliance. Okay, which is actually Mystery's idea. And Mystery got it from operant conditioning in classical psychology. Okay, B.F. Skinner. Um, who else? I think Freud, but mo mostly uh, B.S. Skinner, okay? He was saying that basically if someone uh, complies, like think about like, like with the animal training, right? Or, or training like a child to behave. Um, and don't, you know, don't mince those examples to, you know, to mean I'm implying something out of limit. I'm just talking about the way human nature is and the way, you know, interacting with, with living organisms is. If that dog or child misbehaves, the correct move is to punish it, okay? And then it learns to not do that again. If it does something that's good or like in your favor, the correct move is to reward, okay? So then it's trained to do that thing more, okay? So the way this works from a game standpoint is when you approach, it's a compliance test. When you open, it's a compliance test. When you ask to go for a number, it's a compliance test. When you, um, Try to take her home, it's a compliance test. When you text to see if she responds back, it's a compliance test. When you try to kiss her, it's a compliance test. When you try to have sex, it's a compliance test. On and on and on. Every piece of game is a compliance test. I've mapped out what those key compliance, compliance tests are from open to close, and I show guys what to do when they run into points of non-compliance. So a lot of guys have equated my system to Jordan Belfort's straight line persuasion system. Jordan Belfort uh, being from Wolf Wall Street. And it shows how going from point A to B, um, Basically, that you know structurally what's going to happen along that path. 
And when there's an objection or a point of non-compliance, it deviates off the straight line. So boom, deviates off the straight line. I know how to optimally bring those things back to the straight line, or at least make a good attempt with the best probabilities to bring it back to the straight line and then move it forward again. That's why my method is extremely efficient and optimized and effective. And if the probability doesn't seem that well after you move it back to the straight line of basically going how you want things to go, then I teach how to recognize that and cut bait, etc. All that, I wanted to go into all that because that ties into directly disproving the four times reapproach rule. If I walk up to a girl, I'm like, hey, I want to meet you real quick, what's your name? And she's like, oh, and I, you know, and I'm like, oh, I just wanted to meet you. And I try to deal, I, I talk about doing your due diligence, okay, to deal with the non-compliance. If after doing my due diligence, the girl still isn't interested, it's really dumb to go back in, all right? Basically, the girl is not down and the girl is not interested in talking, okay? So that doesn't mean, okay, let me come back in, in 10 minutes and try another clever opener. Let me go, you know, come back. So that's totally wrong, okay? So he's wrong about the first half of the night not mattering. He's wrong about the four times your approach. And uh, what's the other big one? He's wrong about how you need six to eight days on Tinder, okay? He also says you should be running these ultra long sets and that you, you just wanna like be with the girl towards the end of the night. I think that's wrong too. I, it doesn't matter what time of the night it is or how many girls you've talked to before, talking to the current one you're talking to, the correct view is to look at everything in a vacuum, okay? Meaning every set is in a vacuum. There's no warming up, there's no building state, okay? So very often I pull the first or second girl of the night. If the girl, I'm just searching for a girl that has good logistics, whose objections I can beat, okay? And I assume attraction, I already assume I got her before I go in. The purpose of the interaction, the purpose of doing seduction or pickup, okay, running the interaction itself is not to win the girl over, it's not to gain points, it's not to do well or, or convince her to like you, it's not to uh, stop yourself from losing points, okay, none of that stuff applies whatsoever, okay, what it, the, the purpose of it is to find out her logistical situation and her objections and if she doesn't end up liking you, you don't give a fuck, all right, it doesn't mean that you fucked up. If you presented the best version of yourself and she doesn't like it, that's fine. That doesn't mean tell her to fuck off. That doesn't mean call her a bitch. It just means it's fine. And you move on to the next one. Okay, you can be the best salesman in the world, for instance, and you knock on a door and they tell you fuck off or they slam the door in your face. You can never prevent those things from happening. And, you, and, you're, and not everyone is gonna be interested in what it is you have to sell. When you're doing pickup and gain, you're marketing yourself, okay? If you're presenting the best version of yourself, a high value, you know, confident, attractive, um, easy going, you know, version that, that basically comes across as like her dream man, or, you know, there's a lot more to it. But when you present that to people, it doesn't matter if it's the first girl of the night. The, like traditional RSD view is, oh, you, you haven't warmed up yet. Julian says like, talk to guys and fat girls the first half of the night to build state. That's retarded, that's really stupid. Okay, you don't wanna do that. You wanna go in with a killer mindset that you can pull any girl at any time, okay? And that's how you get to become a master. That's how you become, achieve extreme levels of greatness. I just hit 1,300 girls in this game. It wasn't an accident, okay? I never went in like, oh, well, you know, maybe in the early, early days, but I, I'm saying like, you need to have this strong mindset that you can get any girl any time. And okay? when, when you fully believe that, the girls will start to believe that too. And they radiate, you know, it comes through in all your body language and your verbals, et cetera. And it puts everything, exactly on track where it should be. So, um, you know, the stuff that Alex Social says, Alex Forward Natural, about how you just need to stay in the set for a long time, you know, okay, sink your whole night into one girl, and then if that girl ends up not working out, you have no leads to set for dates the rest of the night. I much prefer collecting 10 to 15 phone numbers on a given night out, and then, you know, if a girl is not interested after doing my due diligence, good, she just saved me a whole bunch of time. I'm not gonna go reapproach her three times. I'm not gonna sit in a set for three hours that seems to have low probabilities of going anywhere, right? The opportunity cost is massive when you're sticking in on one girl or two girls for the whole night, okay? When you could be talking to like 20, 25 girls. Some, some nights I talk to even more than that, okay? So uh, kind of to recap, First of all, you do not want to trust this guy for inner game advice, okay? He's a total fucking mess. Let me recap those things that he has going on, okay? Totally broke in massive debt, massive alcoholic, very depressed, has tried to kill himself many times, okay? He's crying in a bathtub and posting up on social media, okay? That is a guy that needs professional help. I'm not making fun of it, but it's not a guy that's going to teach you how to, 
how to do inner games, okay? And I, and I made that very clear. I spoke at the Sopot Summit in Poland last year. I was a speaker, he was a speaker. It got to be the end of the, the conference at the, at the coaches panel. There was like Alex from Playing With Fire. There was like maybe six or seven of us. We had all given our speeches already individually. And I was on the microphone. I had one of the microphones. And I said, first off, I stood up. I went right in front of him. I said, this guy should not be teaching you in your game. Okay, this guy has tried to kill himself a bunch of times. He's tried to like crash his car. He has very serious problems, okay, with depression, with suicide, all this stuff. And, you know, he, he's a massive guy. He's living out of a van. This is not a good role model for impressionable young men, okay? And not to mention all this stuff he's saying about seduction is technically off from a technical game standpoint. Okay, I'll go through a lot more on Todd V and a lot more on these other fucking coaches from a technical game standpoint because you guys are like, oh, you make fun of Todd for, for uh, having a baby with a five and being in a relationship with a, with a five for, for like six, seven years, okay? And I'm like, yeah, would you want to take how to learn uh, making money advice from a homeless guy, okay? If he's with a five, okay, or Julian married like a busted chick as well, if this is the best that a guru can do, okay, do you really want to be learning from that guy? That's why I think, you know, the, those guys, CoffeeZilla and all that, they put me on the, I'll roll a clip from that. I think, okay, John Anthony Lifestyle is going to break it down for us. He's like, look, this Moneybird guy, he's a dirtbag, he's going to charge you 5000 for this, his his pickup, 5000 for the pickup, the pickup coaches are bullshit, they don't know, they're not trained. Yeah. He's going to charge you another 5000 for stock program, 5000 right. for real estate, 20000 for the next thing. It's all together $50,000 over a year or whatever. And the but the worst part, but the worst part, he's gonna scam you for fifty thousand dollars. But the worst part, right? What's worse than that? The worst. This is the worst. We saw his girlfriend. She's a five. <laughs> his girlfriend's a five. Like, can you imagine? <laughs> you like pay for like five thousand dollars pickup, and then you see the girlfriend. You're like, that's his girlfriend. That's a she's five. A five. Dude, baby, <laughs> I want my money back. <laughs> They said that, I, that one of my big zingers against Derek was that he's dating a five, not to mention his whole entire business and operation is a full scam. But those guys picked out the fact that I call his girlfriend a five, which is confirmed by a whole bunch of sources. And the reason why that's an important thing to mention, okay, in the, in the seduction community, they, they couldn't relate to it because they don't understand, is these are guys that are supposed to be the ultimate masters. Okay, if some average guy off the street can get a girlfriend that's hotter than that, which most guys can, for you know, Derek's girlfriend's a five, Todd's girlfriend's a five, you have all these guys worshiping then. Okay, my point is, yeah, that says a lot on its own, but there's also a fuck ton of problems with their technical game, which I'll go through and, and make videos about. Okay, that's not the, the only silver bullet. Okay, then for all the Todd worshippers out there, if you don't care that his girlfriend's a five and use the dumb defense that she must have a 10 personality, Okay, which is highly doubtful, highly unlikely. And even if she did, she's still fucking ugly. Okay, even if even if you you know want to not stomach that and, and still defend him, um, he was pushing fucking RST scam shit for ten years. Okay, he was, had no problem doing that. And then finally, when he broke away from them, he said so the idea of social circle game is retarded. The idea of natural game doesn't even make sense. Uh, of course looks matter, like all this stuff that he had been saying the direct opposite for years. He finally had the balls to speak out, okay? He didn't call them out because he's a pussy, but he finally is like denouncing all this stuff that he pushed for 10 years. So let's talk about woo-woo self-help. Let's talk about the secret. Let's talk about high vibration energy. These are things that are called pseudoscience. They're meant to sound like real principles of nature. They're meant to sound scientific, but there is nothing like a fact within that entire realm. Looks and money, do they matter? It's the age old debate and the answer of course is, yes they matter, of course they matter. What are you, stupid? Let's talk about the bullshit marketing myth that is social circle game. Let's talk about the crock of shit that is natural game. First of all, the very idea of natural game doesn't even make sense to be taught. Let's talk about infield footage. It's a powerful tool for teaching but it's also a powerful tool for marketing and a powerful tool for lying, 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 lying. No. However, what you usually see with infield is very choppy. You see heavily edited, choppy, sort of like sensationalist bits. Um, and let me tell you a little bit about how some people might go about creating those bits. Let's say, for example, you just went out every single night. And every single night you go out, so you have a lot of footage to draw from, number one. And then what you do is you do a, very, a lot of very high risk things. You do stuff that won't work very often, but when it does work, it will look really, really good. 
right? And then what you do is 90% of it you never show. The 10% that comes off, you show, and it makes you look like a boss. However, the problem is that it's not real. It's like three strikes, you're out. Okay? You, you end up for six years with five, have a baby with her, you push a whole bunch of RST scam trash for 10 years, and then later denounce it so that you can like, you know, make a name for yourself and, and, and fucking try to recover your image and make money. And then number three, your technical game is a giant mess. Okay? You're massively overcomplicating the game, doing all kinds of shit that's, that's just making guys confused and all this stuff. So I will make more videos on deconstructing their social game, their technical game. But to close about Alex, do not, you know, Alex from uh, Four Week Natural, okay, RST Alex, you don't want to fucking take advice from a guy that has all those fucking problems, okay? And, like I said, his technical game is way off as well. So I'll leave you with that. Merry Christmas. Thank you guys so much uh, for being a loyal subscriber. Subscribe already if you have not. Um, if you want to actually get an extremely giant upgrade in your dating results, Click the link in the description, uh, free 30 minute call with me personally. I will show you a path, it's a free no obligation call, okay? But I'll show you a path on how I can massively skyrocket your results in a matter of two months, okay? Thank you so much for watching. Lots of good shit to come in 2021. I'll see you on the next video. Take care. Some do it for the income, but we do it for the outcome. Some of us are active while others just let their mouth run. No doubt, son, this is not just about fun. We will not be outdone by these cowards who shout scum.